Hello everyone, my name is Jasper Auerkerk and in this video I will be guiding you through the Galaxy tutorial Trio Analysis using Synthetic Datasets from RD Connect GPAP. To open a tutorial you can click on this icon. This will show all the tutorials uh, that are available in Galaxy. Um, in this video we will go to Variant analysis and scroll below to find our tutorial trio analysis using synthetic data sets. In this video, uh, video and tutorial, we will uh, answer the questions. How do we import data from the EGA? How to download files with HGSCAT in Galaxy? How do you pre-process VCFs? How do you identify causative heritance? Um, and the objectives are requesting DAC access and importing data from the EGA, pre-processed VCS using regular expressions and using annotations and phenotype information to find uh, causative variants. Um, it would be useful to first follow the introduction to galaxy analysis and the sequence analysis tutorials before doing uh, this tutorial. So um, the tutorial starts with some introduction on uh, variants and in uh, family trios. Um, so you can have different kind of uh, patterns such as autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and de novo. Uh, if you want to know more about this, you can read the introduction. Um, I won't go through this uh, in this video. Um, so in this video, we will make use of the HCS GET protocol, uh, which is a program to download data securely and safely uh, using the EGA download client. Uh, in Galaxy. Um, we will not start our analysis from scratch because we will be directly using the VCF files or the variant calling files. Um, if you want to know more about uh, doing variant calling from uh, the start, uh, you can follow the link here and go to the tutorial Exome Sequencing Data Analysis for Diagnosing a Genetic Disease. Um, so, um, we, first we have to, uh, get the data. Uh, in this tutorial, we are using date, uh, case five from the RD connect GPAP synthetic data sets. Um, the data sets have been generated from real family trios, which originate from the Illumina Platinum Initiative. Um, and is described in Eberle et al. 2017. Um, if you're interested, you can follow this link and read their paper. And this data was available by the HubMap project. Um, in this data set that we're using, a real causative variant was manually spiked in, so uh, which should cause breast cancer. Um, this has been synthetically introduced in the mother and daughter. Um, and here our goal is to identify the genetic variation responsible for the disease. So um, first, uh, we want to download the data. Um, for this, you will need to go to the EGA archive and request DAC access. Uh, this will take uh, only one work day and it gives you access to all the RD Connect GPAP synthetic data sets. However, if you don't have the time to do that, you can also download the data from Zenodo uh, by clicking on this button. Um, and we can import the data from here. Um, so uh, to import the VCS, you copy the lines and then you go to your uh, galaxy um, to download the files you go to um, upload data 
paste fetch data and then copy and then pasting the links in the in the bar in the text box here and then you click start it will be downloading the three vcfs so here we have case 5f which is the father case 5ic which is the case and case 5m However, we will be. Um, however, we will uh, request DAC access using uh, the EGA archive. Um, to request DAC access, you go to uh, the EGA archive website, which is egaarchive.org. Um, to request DAC access, you first need to find your data set. Um, in this case, we will be using uh, this data set, EGAD 00001008392. Um, and we can search it here. Then we go to data sets and we click on this link. So this data set uh, consists of 18 samples um, uh, because there are three VCFs, one for the mother, one for the father, and one for the case. And then that's uh, for six uh, case uh, samples. So um, to get access to this data set, you need to request it and we can find how to do it here. So the contact person for this specific uh, data set is the EGA help desk um, found here. So you just uh, need to email the help desk at egaarchive.org and request the data set um, by sending them an email. I have already done this before. So you can see in my account and my data sets, the EGA data set available, which is this one. When you don't have an account yet, the EGA will make one for you and then you can uh, access your data. Um, to link your EGA account to the Galaxy, you go to, uh, you have to put in some uh, settings. Um, so you go to users, preferences, manage information, and then you go to uh, add your email address to the your EGA uh, account block and the password of your EGA account. And then everything should be set up properly. Um, to test this, we are going to use the EGA download client again uh, in this step of the tutorial. Yeah, so check the login and authorized data sets. Uh, by listing your authorized data sets using the EGA download client. So we go to EGA and then that's the default. So we just run the tool. Um, this can take some time because we are downloading the Sonoda files and also the EGA has to connect with its servers. So I'll be right back. So after some time, the request has been uh, finished properly. And we can show a, a look at the output. And then you should see your data set listed here. Uh, and this is the corresponding data set. Also, our VCF files from the Zenodo links have been downloaded successfully. However, I will not uh, go use this as we will continue with the EGA doc access way to download the files. Uh, if we go back to the tutorial, uh, uh, we can start the next task of downloading the list of uh, files from the dataset. 
So um, each data set has, of course, multiple files. And first we have to request the list of files to see actually uh, what we want to use. So you click again on the EGA download client, list files in a data set, and then add your accession ID. Um, so which one we can find, find in the listed one here. So we copy this one, list files in a data set, paste the data set number and run the tool. Again, this might take some time again, uh, uh, depending on the, uh, m the amount of activity on the EGA uh, archive uh, site. So the list of files have been downloaded properly and we can look at the result. So here you can see a list of files that are available in the data set. So here you see, in this column, you see the file IDs and here you see the file names. So in the first row, we see case free and then the pro band uh, and then the forward reads. Uh, however, we are only interested in the VCS of case five. Um, to find these files, we can use an automatic filter, fil filter tool uh, described in the tutorial. So go back to the tutorial and then we downloaded the list of files and now we want to filter them. So we have to search in the text files um, as the pattern of the VCF files. Uh, so we go to search in text files. We want to uh, open the file list of the EGA dataset. And then we want to match a regular expression or a regex uh, uh, to uh, extract the lines with uh, the files that we want. Uh, for this, we use egrep, so there are different ways of uh, formats of regular expressions, but in this case, we'd use egrep. And then we will type our regular expression uh, described in the tutorial. So we will copy it and paste it from here. So uh, we will try to find for lines in the file, which contain case five. So the case that we're interested in, and then we put a point and a plus, which means you match any character for, um, uh, until you find 17, uh, and then we match any character again for uh, until we find the extension vcf.gc. And the dollar sign here means that the, the line has to end with this file because the file names are uh, at the end of the file. So we have to uh, match them at the end. And we make sure that the case sensitivity is set and then we uh, run the tool. So this will output the list of uh, files that we would want. Okay, so the file has been filtered and we can check the results. So now we see three rows of files that uh, we want to download. So we see the case, the mother and the father. Uh, and we go back to the tutorial. So now we want to uh, download the files uh, listed here. And we uh, go to the EGA download client again. So EGA. We click on download multiple files based on file ID. Uh, you can also do download the file, but then we only can do it once and we want to. So you do it this three times but we can also do it in one time, which is a lot easier. So you select that and then you select the file that you want to use. And then we select the column containing the file IDs. So that's column one. And then we can also request a specific genomic range. However, the 
uh, files are already split by chromosome. And in this case, we're only interested in chromosome 17. So we won't have to put in anything here. Uh, but this is very useful if you want to uh, download BAMS, for example. So we run the tool and then we wait for the VCS to be downloaded. So the files have been downloaded and uh, are listed here. Uh, so we have our your father, our uh, case, and our mother, VCS. Um, and also I just realized we nev I have never given a name to my history. So I will be doing that uh, now. It's always good to uh, name your history. So I will call it um, Trio Analysis. Using EGA. So the next step in the tutorial is to uh, decompress our VCS files because we want to do some pre-processing using uh, text files. So for now they are BG zipped VCS. Um, we cannot use like uh, tools that use uh, text files. So therefore we have to uh, decompress them. Uh, we can do this uh, by going to our data set, uh, click the edit button, and then we uh, use convert, and then we do uh, convert compressed file to uncompressed file, and then we convert our collection. And this will create a new collection um, with our uh, converted uh, VCFs. So the files have been converted uh, to VCFs, as you can see. So before they were VCS.gc and now they are normal VCS. And then we can pre-process our, our files. So go back to the tutorial. Yeah, so first we have to add a chromosome prefix to the VCS because they do not contain the chromosome uh, yet. Uh, they uh, just uh, show the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Uh, but uh, we have to add this chromosome because the tools later expect this uh, prefix. So we go to the uh, tool column regex find and replace. And then we have to um, copy paste the regular expressions that are displayed here. Um, so we do go to this tool, we select our files, uh, which is a collection. So we cl click on this button, then you uh, choose the uncompressed VCF files. So we uh, add our first check, so we do insert check, and then we go to the tutorial again. So we uh, put in this regex and then we uh, to find this pattern and then replace it with this this uh, pattern so move this so what this does is it tries to find lines that start with uh, uh, 0 to 9 m y or x so these are the chromosome numbers and then replace them with and then add the chromosome prefix. So it adds the CHR and then slash one is, is the, is the pattern that it found. So it doesn't, doesn't affect the pattern. It just adds, it adds the prefix. And then we add another, uh, uh check, uh, which is, uh, focused on the header lines of the VCF. Um, so here we want to replace the header lines that describe the contours and the chromosomes described in the VCF uh, by also adding the prefix there. Uh, so we add another check, we paste the chromosome, the uh, regex, and then, and then we add the replacement. And what this does, it uh, first matches uh, this pattern uh, which is, it has to start with the hashtag, hashtag, and then contig, and then equals uh, 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 some ID, 
and then uh, and then uh, we add the chromosome, and then uh, you find the and then you try to find the same pattern here as there, which is basically the chromosome uh, uh, name. And then we add the prefix in between these two uh, matches and then we run the tool. Okay, so we can show, uh, I can show you how, what uh, exactly changed in the VCF file. So you click on the collection and then you click on the eyeball and then it will load the file. And then uh, we scroll down and then we see the context header lines. So the header lines are determined by the hashtags and then see contig and then the ID and then is equals uh, chromosome one. So before it was only the one here and now it has added the chromosome. And also we can go to the file and then we see that the chromosome prefix has been added to the chromosome column here. Um, so while this is running, we can go to the next step. Um, yeah, uh, if we have, if you're not completely sure about the regex, you can always find more resources on it. And it has, has been explained also very, uh, elaborately, elaborately in the, uh, tutorial here. So the next step is normalizing the VCF files uh, by left aligning them and uh, uh, normalizing them. Um, according to this article done at all in a Indel is only left aligned and normalized if and only if it is no longer possible to shift its position to the left while keeping the length of its alleles constant. And if it is represented as in as few nucleotides as possible. So basically there are many ways to uh, 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 explain a uh, variant in some text. So uh, here there's a CA deletion according to the reference. So uh, this can be seen as um, CA and then a dot, or it can be seen as CAC changing to C, or it can be a GCA, CA to GCA. Uh, so yeah, there are many ways to uh, represent this. However, we have to make sure that all the uh, variants are represented in the same way because we will compare them between the cases and they are also in the databases. They are only represented in uh, the normalized way. Uh, so to normalize our data, we will use the BCF tools norm um, tool. And we will use the collection and then we use the one with the, where we replace the prefixes and we use the built-in genome and we just use the HG19. Um, uh, and then we want to left align and normalize indels. Uh, we don't want to use deduplications um, and we want to uh, split multi allelic sites into bioallelic records and we do it both for SNPs and indels. So what this step does is basically um, uh, splitting the, the variants into uh, multi allelic variants. So if there's a, if there's on the same position, a different variant on the on the on the two alleles then uh, they will be represented as uh, two records uh, because they can also be represented in one record and then we want to output our files as uncompressed vcs and then we run the tool so now that the normalization step has finished we can go to the next step in our tutorial which is filtering non-ref sites so in our VCS, there are some non-ref tags in the alt column, uh, the column that represents the mutated nucleotides. And uh, these tags uh, correspond to any possible alternative allele at this location. Uh, 
uh, but so they are a kind of placeholders for potential variants. However, we are not really interested in these variants because they slow our, down our analysis quite a lot. So we go to filter this out, we go to use the filter tool. Uh, we select dataset collection, the normalized uh, VCFs. We filter uh, based on the alt column, which is column five. And then we uh, select the non rest sites. And then we change the equal equal sign to uh, uh, exclamation word equal sign, which means that uh, the uh, condition means that it should not be equal to the non rest site. And we skip 142 header lines uh, because uh, we want to skip the header because we don't want to filter out any header lines. And then we just run the tool. So the filtering is done uh, of the non rest sites and we can look at what the effect is. So we see for the father VCFs, there are now 140,000 lines left, which is a lot. Uh, basically, we only kept 4.9% as is uh, shown here using this filtering. Um, so basically we have filtered out a lot, which helps us uh, with the downstream analysis to speed that up. Uh, so the next step is to merge our VCFs into one data set. So what we do here is we take all the three separate files of the father and mother in case, and we merge it into a single VCF. And then this will show for each row a variant again, but then after that a variant information, you see the three columns of our samples. So case, mother and father, and then whether or not they have the same variant or they don't have the variant. And if they don't have the variant, it is indicated by uh, this uh, pattern. Um, we can merge the VCFs using the BCF tools merge tool uh, by clicking here. And then we click data set collection, the filtered VCFs. Uh, we don't restrict it to any regions. Uh, then for merging, we can, uh, again, there can be some multi allelic records, but we don't want any new ones. We are just want to output them as multiple records instead. Uh, there are no header options and we just output the, uh, again, as a VCF file, and then we run the tool. So the VCFs have been merged and now we can have a look how that uh, what that results in. So open the VCF by clicking the eyeball. Then we scroll down to the records. And then we see the chromosome uh, of this variant position 302, reference is T, and then the alternative is TA, so it's an insertion of an A. Then you see some variant information. And then we see the cases, um, and then you can see which one has uh, which. So um, in this case, uh, all the family members have this variant. Um, however, in the fourth row, you can see that the mother doesn't have this variant uh, because it is indicated by the empty dots. And this is makes it's very useful for uh, algorithms to check whether variants are shared, uh, especially based on because the inheritance pattern is uh, important when considering the Terio analysis. So for the next step in the tutorial, uh, we go to the annotation of the VCF. And to annotate our data, we will use the SNPF tool uh, using the merged VCF. Um, so we click on the SNPF tool here, and then we input the merged VC, uh, VCF. Um, and then we also output it as VCF. Uh, we 
use the locally installed SNPF d uh, database, and then we use HG19, because that's the reference that we're using. Uh, this we keep this we keep everything the same here. Uh, we use the defaults. Um, we do no uh, special stuff, and then we just run the tool. So the annotation is done of the VCF files, and it has created uh, the VCF file and also an uh, HTML file with some results. So have a look at that. So here you see just a general summary of the file uh, and the results. So we see the number of SNPs found, 150,000, the insertions and the lesions. And um, um, we see the number of effects by impact. So there are um, less high impact variants compared to low or moderate, which is to be expected. Um, if uh, the, the effect by functional class, so if the variant is a missense uh, mutation, nonsense or silent, and then uh, the location of the variants uh, shown in the table above and uh, in a bar plot. So we see that mostly they are uh, intron variants in introns. And then here you see some more stats that I will not go uh, into, but you can have a look at it uh, yourself. So for the next step in the tutorial, we go to uh, the Gemini analysis, uh, i.e. the TRIO analysis. Uh, before we can uh, use this uh, TRIO analysis, we have to create a pedigree file describing our family TRIO. Um, so um, the pedigree file you can see here and you can import in Galaxy by pasting and fetching. So we copy the uh, pedigree file, we go to upload data, we no, we do paste and fetch data, and then we give it a name, just pedigree, and then click on start, and then it will be imported. So now I will explain the pedigree file. So uh, they have a family ID, so which row belongs to the certain family. Um, the name of the sample, so we have uh, 6M, 6F, and 6C. So as you might remember, we use case five, not case six. However, in the VCS, the sample names are case six. Um, so therefore we also have to design them in the pedigree like this. So then they have the paternal ID, so that's the sample name of the father and the maternal ID, the a uh, sample name from the mother. So here it is 6F and 6M for the our, our case sample. And then the sex of the person, two is the female, one is male. So we had the mother and daughter. Um, and then the phenotype, whether or not the person is uh, affected by the disease. Uh, so you have two is affected and one is unaffected. So in our case, the mother and daughter both had breast cancer, so they are both affected, and the father is not. So the next step is uh, loading our pedigree file and uh, VCF file in the Gemini database. So we can use this with the Gemini load tool. Um, then we drag and drop our VCF file here, and then we scroll down and then we select our pedigree, and then we run the tool, and then we wait until our, uh, the database is loaded. So the database has been loaded, so now we can uh, analyze the database using the Gemini tools. However, before we can uh, start with that, we need to know what kind of inheritance pattern we are interested in. So we know that both the mother and daughter have uh, are affected and the father is not. This makes it less likely that the uh, inheritance pattern is uh, recessive. It is still possible. Uh, however, um, 
an autosomal dominant pattern, which can also apply here, is much more likely. Um, also, this is the case for the de novo pattern. Uh, since uh, the mother is infected, uh, it is again more likely that the pattern is autosomal dominant and not the de novo, where most likely you will see that both parents are not affected. Uh, but the proband or the daughter or son is affected. So to analyze uh, the trio, we use the Gemini inheritance pattern uh, tool. Uh, so we select our database and then our assumption of the inheritance pattern, which is autosomal dominant. And then we add an extra constraint. Uh, the extra constraint is the we require that the impact severity of the variant uh, cannot be equal to low. Um, so a low impact severity means that, that it has uh, no impact on protein function, which is likely uh, more causative for, the, for a disease. So we put that in there. Uh, then we keep the uh, additional criteria to the default. So no analyze all variants from all included families. And then we uh, output want to output a custom report by adding additional comma columns that are separated by a comma. So then we go to the back to the tutorial and then we copy paste this line here. And then we run our tool and then we wait until the analysis is done and we will get a list of variants that are causative for um, that are potentially causative for the disease so now the uh, analysis has finished and we can uh, we have generated the list of variants that could be uh, the cause of the breast cancer um, so when we have a look at the file, you can see uh, a lot of information on the variants. So each row is a variant. And then um, we can see the impact, the gene it was on, the significance according to ClinVar and the disease name and the gene phenotype and uh, some RS IDs, uh, variant IDs, and then uh, some information on the trio. And then uh, you see it like the samples and they are all related to K6C and 6M because we uh, search for autosomal dominant. Um, and to see if we can find anything related to uh, our term, we can look for breast, for example. So, and then we find uh, two rows. So we see uh, this one here, BRCA1 gene, and we see text 14. However, for text 14, we see a none at the ClinVar significance, which is this column, and there's also no disease name. However, when we look at the BRCA1, we see that it is pathogenic and um, also related to breast. So this is the uh, variant that is most likely to be the uh, variant that causes the breast cancer. And it also actually is the, the variant that we were looking for. So with this tutorial, we can have found the the variant of interest and um, we have downloaded data sets from the EGA using the ACS GET protocol. Uh, we were able to find the variant by pre-processing and annotating the variants using SNPF and Gemini. Um, uh, basically you can extend this work by downloading any trio data set from the EGA using uh, Galaxy and the EGA download client and do analysis yourself um, uh, with this workflow, which is listed here. Um, I hope you, it, you found this video useful for uh, your future work and 
um, hopefully makes it easier for you to do trio analysis in Galaxy.